Good afternoon, class. Today we're going to go over chapter two. The conceptual framework for financial reporting. And we're going to discuss in detail the basic objective, uh, fundamental concepts and recognition and measurement of concepts. And so our first learning objective is describe the usefulness of a conceptual framework. And so the need for a conceptual framework to develop a cohort set of standards and rules to solve new and emerging practical problems. It prescribes the nature, function, and limits of financial accounting and financial statements. And so the FASA has issued seven statements of financial accounting concepts known as the SFAC for business enterprises. So over the years, numerous organizations developed and published their own conceptual frameworks, but no single framework was universally accepted and relied on in practice. And so in 1976, the FASB began to develop a conceptual framework that would be the basis for setting accounting rules and for resolving financial reporting controversies. And so the FASB since then have released seven statements of financial accounting and concepts that relate to financial reporting for business enterprises. And they're listed here. Subsequently, um, SFAC number eight followed, and we'll discuss that in, in a further chapter. And so overview of the conceptual framework. The framework is built on three levels. Uh, the first level is basic objectives. The second level is a qualitative characteristics and elements. And the third level, recognition, measurement, and disclosure concepts. And so this is a, this is a visual of a visual illustration of the um, conceptual framework. And so here we start with the objective, provide information about the reporting entity that is useful to present and potential equity investors, lenders and other creditors in their capacity as capital providers. So basically the why, the purpose of accounting and uh, the next level. The second level is qualitative characteristics and the elements. And so the qualitative characteristics are broken out through fundamental qualities and your enhancing qualities and then your elements. And so the second level is basically a bridge between the first and the third. And so your third level is the higher level is the how uh, implementation. And so it deals with the recognition, measurement and disclosure concepts, assumptions, principles and constraints. And so we're going to discuss each one of these levels and all of these details. Uh, in the next following slides, but this is a, a very important um, illustration. So you may want to um, take this illustration and you actually can make notes on this actual illustration as we go through describing these different levels. And I think that would serve as one sheet with uh, a lot of information on it for you to reference as we go through the following chapters. And so understanding the objective of financial reporting. And so the objective of financial reporting is to provide financial information about the reporting entity that is useful to present and potential equity investors, lenders and other creditors in making decisions about providing resources to the entity. And so this is the first level of the framework. And so as indicated in Chapter one, the basic objective is to provide information to decision makers and companies uh, prepare general purpose financial statements. And so three, identify the qualitative characteristics of accounting information. And so the FASB identified the qualitative characteristics of accounting information that distinguish better, more useful information than inferior or less useful information for decision making purposes. And so this is the second level. And so here's the illustration of the second level of the framework where you have the primary users of accounting information, the constraints, which are the costs, the pervasive criterion, which is decision usefulness and your fundamental qualities, which are uh, relevance and faithful representation and your enhancing qualities. And so the major part of the second level uh, we're going to discuss right now, your fundamental qualities. And so relevance Is your first quality. And so here we have fundamental quality relevance. And so the ingredients of the fundamental quality are predictive value, 
confirmatory value and materiality. And so to be relevant, accounting information must be capable of making a difference in a decision. And so predictive value, the financial information has predictive value. If it has value as an input to predictive processes used by investors to form their own expectations about the future. Conformity value, relative information also helps users conform or correct prior expectations and materiality. Information is material if omitting it or misstating it could influence decisions that users make on the basis of the rep reported financial information. And so these three ingredients uh, make of the fundamental quality make up relevance. And so now you have faithful representation, which is the second fundamental quality here in our illustration. And so faithful representation is the ingredients that make up faithful representation consist of completeness, neutrality, and free from error. And so faithful representation means that numbers and descriptions match what really existed or happened. And so completeness means that all the information that is necessary for faithful representation is provided. Sorry about that. Neutrality means that a company cannot select information to favor one set of interested parties over another. And free from error, an information item that is free from error will be more accurate, faithful representation of financial items. And so here we have the enhancing qualities for fundamental for the fundamental qualities. And so we've previously just discussed the ingredients that make up the fundamental qualities. So for relevance, again, it's predictive value, conformatory, and materiality. Under faithful representation, you have completeness, neutrality, and free from form. And then you have your enhancing qualities. And so the enhancing qualities apply to both of these fundamental qualities, if you notice how the hierarchy um, flows here. And so you have comparability, verifiability, timeliness, and understandability. And so comparability, information that is measured and reported in a similar manner for different companies is considered par comparable. Verifiability occurs when independent measures using the same methods obtain similar results. <clears throat> timeliness means having information available to decision makers before it loses its capacity to influence decisions. And understandability is the quality of information that lets reasonably informed users see its significance. So again, the enhancing qualities of comparability, verifiability, timeliness, and understandability enhance both fundamental qualities of relevance and faithful representation in our pyramid here. And so now we've discussed the qualitative characteristics. Next, we're going to discuss the elements. And these are very important accounting terms and concepts that everyone needs to know. And so defining the basic elements of financial statements. And so concept statement number six defines 10 interrelated elements that relate to measuring the performance and financial status of a business enterprise. And here you have a moment in time, which are assets, liabilities, and equity, and then a period of time, investments by owners, distribution to owners, comprehensive income, revenue, expenses, gains, and losses. Um, the separation between these two, these 10 items, the moment in time is because assets and liabilities and equity they continue on forever for the existence of the company. And so you're stopping at some point and, and you're determining what are the liabilities, what are the assets, what is owner's equity. For a period of time, we all know that revenue and expenses and, and these other items are, um, they close out every year. So you're just measuring them within the fiscal year or a certain period of time. And so to define these items, uh, assets are probably future economic benefits. Liabilities are probable future sacrifices of economic benefits. Equity, residual interest, and assets of any entity that remains after deducting its liabilities. Investments by owners, increases in the net assets of the particular enterprise resulting from transfers to it from other entities of something of value to obtain or increase ownership interest. Distribution to owners, decreases in net assets of a particular enterprise resulting from transferring assets, rendering services, or inquiring liabilities by the enterprise to owners, comprehensive income, a change in equity of an entity during the period from transactions and other events and circumstances from non-owner sources, 
revenues, inflow, inflows, or other enhancement of assets, expenses, outflows, or other uses up of assets, or incurrences of liabilities, gains, an increase in equity, and losses, of course, are a decrease in equity. So those were the 10 concept, 10 elements. And so now we're going to deal with, uh, describe the basic assumptions of accounting. And so now we're on the third level. So FASB sets forth the most of these concepts in the statement of financial accounting concepts number five, recognition and measurement and financial statements of business enterprises. And so now we're at the third level of the pyramid, recognition, measurement, disclosure concepts. We're dealing with assumptions, principles, and constraints. The third level, basic assumptions, economic entity, company keeps its activities separate from its owners and other businesses. Going concern, company to last long enough to fulfill objectives and commitments, monetary unit, money is the common denominator, in periodicity, company can divide its economic activities into time periods. And so illustration, identify which assumption of accounting is best described in each item below. And so the economic activities of KC Corporation are divided into 12 month periods for the purpose of issuing annual reports. Periodicity. So Electron Corporation Incorporated does not adjust amounts in its financial statements for the effects of inflation. Monetary unit. Walgreen Company reports current and non-current classifications in its balance sheet. Going concern. And the economic activities of General Electric and its subsidiaries are merged for accounting and reporting purposes. Economic entity. So now we'll explain the application of the basic principles of accounting. And so this is the second item here in the pyramid in the third level. Um, principles. Measurement, revenue recognition, expense recognition, and full disclosure. And so measurement principle, the most commonly used measurements are based on historic cost and fair value. And so the issues with that historic costs provide a reliable benchmark for measuring historical trends, but fair value information is more useful. And recently the FASB has taken steps of giving companies the option of use fair value as the basis for measurement of financial assets and financial liabilities. And so reporting on fair value information is increasing. Revenue recognition requires that companies recognize revenue in the accounting period in which the performance obligation is satisfied. Expense recognition basically is a term saying let the expense follow the revenue. And so here we have an illustration of the type of cost, the relationship, and the recognition. And so production costs, material, labor, overhead, which can be tied directly to an activity, um, direct relationship between cost and revenue. And so we recognize in a period of revenue matching, basically. But period costs, salaries and administrative, they have no direct relationship between cost and revenue. And so they're expensed as they're incurred. And so here we have an illustration. The Boeing Corporation signs a contract to sell airplanes to Delta Airlines for $100 million. To determine when to recognize, use the five steps for revenue recognition shown at the right. And so these are basically uh, five steps that will give you a um, roadmap on how to recognize the revenue. And so step one, identify the contract with the customer. And so it says a contract is an agreement between two parties that creates enforceable rights or obligations. In this case, Boeing has signed a contract to deliver airplanes to Delta. And so step two, identify the separate performance obligation in the contract. And so Boeing has only one performance obligation to deliver airplanes to Delta. If Boeing also agreed to maintain the planes, a separate performance obligation is recorded for this purpose. So each obligation needs to be separated. And so step three, determine the transaction price. And so the transaction price is the amount of the consideration that a company expects to receive from a customer in exchange for transferring a good or service. In this case, the transaction price is straightforward. It's $100 million. And so step four, allocate the transaction price to the separate performance obligation. So in this case, Boeing has only one performance obligation, and that's to deliver the airplanes to Delta. 
So these steps may seem redundant, but they're very important. So step five, recognize the revenue when each performance obligation is satisfied. And so Boeing recognizes revenue of $100 million for the sale of the airplanes to Delta when it satisfies the performance obligation. So that's the delivery of the airplanes to Delta. So they will recognize the revenue from this activity once the planes are delivered, not when Delta actually pays them for these airplanes. It's very important. So third level basic principles. So full disclosure, providing information that is of sufficient importance to influence the judgment and decisions of an informed user. And so uh, they're provided through financial statements, notes to the financials, and supplementary information. So illustration, identify which basic principle of accounting is best described in each item below. And so KC Corporation reports revenue in its income statement when it is earned instead of when the cash is collected. And that's just like the illustration we did with uh, Bowie a minute ago. And so that would be revenue recognition. Yahoo Incorporated recognizes depreciation expense for a machine over the two-year period during which that machine helps the company earn revenue. That would be expense recognition or what is usually termed as a matching principle. You want to match your expenditures with your revenue in the same period. The Oracle Corporation reports information about pending lawsuits in the notes to its financial statements. That's full disclosure. That would be supplementary information. Um, Eastman Kodak Company reports land on its balance sheet at the moment paid to acquire it, even though the estimated fair value is greater. Measurement is dealing with uh, historical cost or fair value. So number seven, describe the impact that cost constraint has on reporting accounting information. And so cost constraint. Cost of providing information must be weighed against the benefit that can be derived from using it. And this is another element of the third level. And so the illustration, the following two situations represent applications of cost constraint. Raphael Corporation discloses fair value information on its loans because it already gathers this information internally. So basically, that's not costing them anything extra to provide more information because they're already they already need to go get this information and, and they're disclosing it somewhere else. Willis Company does not disclose any information in its notes to the financial statements unless the value of the information to the users exceeds the expense of gathering it. And that's basically what the cost constraint means. You don't want to spend extra money providing information that is not worthy to anyone or not useful. So again, here we have a picture, a summary of the structure that we just went over, uh, the framework for accounting, which is which is uh, for financial reporting, which basically you can use as a roadmap. You have your objective. We discussed the objective, the why, um, qualitative characteristics of the information, the elements, definitions of what what the information is is in this uh, framework, and then you have your recognition, measurement, and disclosure concepts. You have your assumptions, the principles and your constraints. Again, this is a very important slide picture that I would keep and reference this often. That's the end of our lecture for today. So please read chapter two again in the book and review the PowerPoint in Moodle. Thank you.